Hey guys, Ryan here with Manus Defense. Today in front of me, as you guys can see, I've got SciTac holsters as well as a wide variety of handguns. So, let's jump into it. If you stay tuned through this whole video, I will be giving away one of these holsters on YouTube as well as one on the Instagram. So, just make sure you watch all the way through and you'll see the details on how to win these holsters. SciTac reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in taking a look at some of their product line and I said absolutely. And so, just to be clear, I am not paid or endorsed by this company. So. SciTac founded back in 2008. Uh, by 2011, these guys were going international with a polymer holster. And then in 2018, these guys were servicing over 88 different countries, including federal agencies, law enforcement, military, and then everyone else in between, including your sports and competition shooters. Uh, what's unique about the product is that the price point is very cheap. And what I mean by cheap is that it's budget friendly, not cheap in terms of quality. These holsters are actually holding up better than I expected. Uh, and your price points are anywhere from like about $20 to about 50 some dollars. Uh, what's really confusing though, at first in my opinion, is the holster naming uh, solutions that they've come up with. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. These holsters have been used by my students so that way I could get more feedback on what they liked and what they disliked. The whole thing I wanted to see was, are these consumer friendly as well as if they're not intuitive enough for the student to use. So, after a couple months of testing these, we have found that these holsters deserve a thumbs up. We actually like this product. Uh, what's unique about it is that they have universal styled fit holsters as well as model specific holsters. As you guys are familiar with, there are kind of two main types of retention here, right? You have either a passive or an active styled retention. Passive retention is typically common for your Kydex styled holsters where it clips around the trigger guard so it eliminates any ability to get in there. Um, the mold will obviously encompass the rest of the gun, but the contact point is the trigger guard. When we talk about a light bearing model, it typically encloses the light and it clips onto the light somehow. And so because of that, it goes past and blocks the trigger guard and blocks the trigger from being activated or actuated. Uh, when you have active retention, there's normally something you have to press. There's a button, there's a grip, there's something that has to be done for you to be able to pull the gun out. Um, you guys, I'm sure are familiar, there are brands out there like Safariland, Blackhawk, et cetera. There are some companies that make a holster where you have to twist it to be able to draw it out of the holster. There are some where they just have a Kydex mold that folds over top and you just have to click it out of the way. I personally like the Spireland product line. I use the ALS holsters and some of the SLS holsters, which are very duty driven. Um, and then you have other companies that make Kydex holsters, such as Vetter, Bravo Concealment, uh, Raven, OTG Hex, uh, et cetera. There are a lot of really good options out there and it's really hard sometimes for us to pick what's the best one. When you go to the website, you'll see that you can either browse uh, the holsters based on the uh, like purpose of the holster, whether it's based on the brand of the gun, or based on the designation of their own naming system. So, some of these holsters include the Megafit. The Megafit holster is supposed to hold over 150 different firearms, as well as a Megafit Compact. There's the R Defender series, there's a Level 3 Duty series, there's a T Thumb Smart series, an F Speeder, I Mini Guard, which is inside the waistband, as well as an ankle styled holster. I personally don't like ankle holsters, same thing, I don't like shoulder holsters. It's kind of one of those things where I've gotten away from all that stuff. I don't personally recommend it. If you want to look into it, that's up to you. What's nice about these guys though is that they're actually offering support for multitudes of firearms out there. Obviously I don't have a full gambit of guns here, but I do have a couple different sized Glocks, two different styled SIGs, a 1911, a CZ, which is the odd man out sometimes, and I even have a Smith & Wesson SV, right? So it's just one of those things where there's such a wide variety that we're just going to try to take a little taste of what these things can do. So. Universal styled fit holsters that they offer, or if you're navigating based on the model of your firearm on their website, they offer holsters for SIG, HK, Walther, Ruger, uh, Taurus, even High Point. So I mean, there's such a wide variety of holsters that you can find to fit your specific needs, okay? So right off the bat, let's start with the Megafit holsters, all right? So we have the Megafit Compact right here. It's in this package. And when we take it out, you'll notice it's already mounted to its mount. It normally has an Allen key, sometimes extra hardware, and then a little manual right here. On the manual itself, there's a QR code, so you can actually watch a video that talks more about your holster, so you have more product info, as well as right in here. It shows you all the different mounting solutions that are available for your holster through their company. So, we'll start with this one. This one's already been uh, adjusted slightly to fit a different gun, but as we can see here, there are four screws here, right? So there's one, two, three, four, okay? So because of that, you can actually adjust the tension for the gun that you're putting in this. We're gonna use a P365 with an XL frame, and it clicks right into place, okay? It doesn't come out, won't come out by yanking on it. 
Obviously, it's a little loose, and I would tighten this up, but it was adjusted for an aftermarket 365 frame. So, to release this firearm, I have to press down on this button here on the side. Normally, we don't like that, okay? Most of the guns that have had a finger release style system have always kind of been a failure point. And what I mean by that is we don't like it because normally your finger ends up down here on the trigger, in the trigger guard, real low like this, or it's even lower. So it's not optimized. But as you guys kind of can see real quick, when I did my draw, I press here, my finger ends up right here. So it's on that seam between the frame and the slide, which is normally where we like to index our finger anyways. So as you can see, real clean draw, real easy to use. This one came originally with a different mount, and that one is more like this one, the regular belt loop, okay? So this is part CY-BC-R, okay? I like those, they're pretty straightforward. What I've mounted on here is actually the belt clip, CY-BC2. I personally don't like this mount that much. Uh, it's reminiscent of a Blade Tech uh, tech lock, um, and I really like those mounts. That's, you know, it was a hot commodity at one point. I think people have moved away from them a little bit but I don't like how tight this is to try to pop open, okay? So I'll struggle, struggle here for a second just to show you how much pain in the butt it is. There we go, all right, it opens up. Maybe it just needs more use to kind of get itself broken in, so maybe that's a good sign that it's nice and tight. As you guys can see here, there is a little plug on the back, so this plug actually comes out and you can adjust the height of it, so that does allow you to select if you're running a smaller belt or a wider belt. So, if you're running one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, a lot of these mounting solutions will accommodate for that. All right, moving that one over, let's take a look at the other universal polymer holster. As you can see, this one is a much larger footprint compared to this guy, significantly larger. We have left this one on its paddle, okay? That paddle looks like this. The paddle has this keyed uh, index point here in the center so you can actually rotate it. And so you can actually set a cant on these holsters if you would like that. That's a nice little feature. So you can take a holster like this, and because it's a universal fit holster, same concept where it has the four points of contact that you can adjust the tension, I can take a full-size gun like a SIG 226. This one's not adjusted for it, mind you. But I can push this gun in and lock it in place, okay? When I want to draw, just press up nice and high, boom, gun comes right out. Again, this is not adjusted for this holster, okay? Or this holster is not adjusted for this gun, so just bear that in mind. So, this same holster though, I can take a CZP-10C, drive it right in, draw it right back out. I could take a Glock 17 or a Glock 22. This is a 40 cal Glock. Notice how it's nice and tight. You didn't hear it because again, it's not adjusted for it, but again, I press the button, I can draw the gun right out. If I wanted to, we could even take the Smith. Let's see if the Smith fits. Clicks right in place, okay? So, press down, draw the gun out, easy. That's a very nice option to have for those that don't want to end up having about 25 different holsters in their collection. Moving on. So over here on the left, we have a T-Smart Thumb Series. This guy is unique because it is just a regular Glock 19 holster. But if I took a regular Glock 19, I drive it in here, it does lock in place, which is really nice. So I can just press down on the thumb, actuate it, draw it straight out. Super clean, super easy, okay? Great entry-level product. Now, let's say I have the Glock 22, the Glock 17, it also fits in there. Personally, I don't like holsters when the muzzle sticks out, but again, it is still safe because the trigger guard is enclosed, it's covered, it's captured, you can't get in there. So, that's nice to know that that fits. What's unique about this one, though, is if I take a gun like this with a compensator and a RMR, right? We just saw that the Glock 22 fit in there. I can take a Glock 19, Zev 19, with a compensator and a red dot, it will fit in this holster. Because of that, I can just drive down on my thumb, draw it out. So, if you're looking for a holster that's red dot ready, this actually will work for you. Again, though, this is not a light bearing model, okay? Staying with the series being T-series, let's look at this guy over here. This one is set up for a P10. Uh, it's also set on a, like a drop panel. So, what's unique about this guy, though, is that it has the QD system. This is their QD. There's two little tabs here. You press them back, it can slide off. You can adjust the cant of this panel, so I can set it forward, rear, straight, whatever I'd like. I can adjust the height of it, as well as I can adjust, again, the tabs to help index the belt loop here on the side, okay? So I can just rotate these in or out of place. Let's drop this guy on. I can take my CZP-10C, drive it right in. Nice active retention. Uh, I think this is one of the harder guns to find a good holster for. I believe certain Spiderland, like GLS holsters and such, or a specific Kydex molder, even if you jump into like the Blackhawk Omnivore series, you can find a holster that's more universal fit, but that's nice to find something that actually is made for it. Looking at the R Defender series here in the front, 
This holster is one of my favorites personally. This one will take a Glock 19 with a Streamlight TLR 1 HL. Locks right into place, okay? So again, kind of like the universal fits, you have your finger here on the side to activate the retention. I can draw the gun out. Again, my finger's in a really nice indexing spot versus it being down below, down in here, or even further down. Okay, nice to see that. Now, I can also take the same holster. I can take a Glock 19 with an X300UA, and it also goes right in the holster, okay? So again, nice, simple, clean draw. This originally, I believe, was designed to fit one of the TCMs or TWMs from Nightstick. Uh, it's a good entry-level price point uh, for a light that operates like a lot of these other brands. It fits the same footprint as some of the Streamlights as well. Speaking of that, let's take a look at this guy. This is a T-Series also, just like the other guys from before, but this one is a light-bearing version for the CZP-10, okay? So, take a CZP-10C like this, Sadly though, the X300 is too big as well as the Streamlight is. So, it won't fit in this holster. So you need to use specifically the nightstick to fit in this holster, but I can also still take a gun without a light and fit it in there. This fits the CZP-10C, as you can see, there's a little bit of contact here. It does bottom out on the bottom of the holster here as well, and then it's the thumb drive. So I just swipe down my thumb, I can draw the gun out, okay? So I do like that this one still takes the gun even without the light. This one is also on that QD mount system like the other one. The only problem with these though that I'm finding is that this is a two bolt system with a QD release. This paddle has the QD on it, okay? I like paddles like this. I use the G-code stuff also, but like even if we look at this one, this is a better paddle, okay? This paddle has these two points on the bottom that are molded in so it helps hold it against the belt. And then this guy would obviously come down on the top, rotate, adjust your can. You can't do a QD system with this though, but you can with this one. While this one though has these spots for bolts to go through for it to actually stay tighter against the body uh, and actually to be positive against your belt, right? Uh, because that's half the battle is making sure that you have a good foundation, which is a good belt. So there's something in there somewhere where I would like to see them combine the two paddles and the mounting solutions and simplify that system versus having two major mounting solutions. Uh, they have the one that rotates on the single bolt and then they have the one like this, okay? So again, there's that. All the way over here on the left, we do have an actual drop panel. This is a little bit confusing at first as well to me. So as you can see here, there's a strap that goes up to your belt, and then this panel goes down to your leg. Uh, it has two mounting points here. So obviously we're not gonna be dual wielding guns, okay, and we're not mounting this on our chest or something. But I think, if anything, this would be for a tourniquet or a magazine pouch. I'm sure they have some sort of magazine pouch that bolts here, but ideally I would like to see a tourniquet pouch mount here and then your gun holster mount back here. That would probably be the better move. Uh, again, though, you can use the single point, you can adjust the rotation, you can have the cant, whatever you'd like on this platform right here, okay? So, as you guys can see, pretty wide selection, pretty unique overall. Uh, it's getting a thumbs up from me. I would recommend these for any new shooter that's out there in the market or anyone that's just looking to add another holster to their collection. That would like to have some sort of active retention. Now, for all of you guys who stayed all the way through the video and watched, if you would like to win one of these holsters on the YouTube or the Instagram, just leave a comment down below saying what gun that you would like to put in one of these holsters and I will draw a random winner in probably two weeks after we air this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, drop a comment down below. Please like, share, subscribe. Again, I'm Ryan with Manus Defense. Thanks for checking us out.